Shalom and shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Trumpet's Call. I'm Maria. I pray that you are holding on to faith, amuna, and holding on to hope during these times. Thank you for joining me once again for another session of our Sunrise Prayers. In today's session of our Sunrise Prayers, we're going to be reading a few verses of scripture that speak about the leadership roles that the Father is distributing amongst his people at this time. And we're going to look to see how it correlates with kingdom work and how those who are faithful over the small are then elevated in the kingdom to come. So let's get started. We're going to begin reading in Matthew or Matayahu chapter 25, verses 14 and 15. And it reads, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Okay, in this verse of scripture, we can clearly see that this is Yahusha speaking, and he's speaking of himself here, as the Father has given him the kingdom of Yasharal, and those of us who are a part of the kingdom as well, we are under his tutelage, we are under his rulership. He is Adon, he is master, he is king. And it's his way, or the highway. He is the boss. The father is in charge of him, and he is in charge of us. This is the father's order. And so he has given authority, he has given power, he has given a role and a responsibility to several of his servants here as we're reading in this parable. And so depending upon how faithful they are, how mature they are, and how they can handle the responsibility, some have been given five, another two, and then another just one. Okay. And it's their responsibility to take what's been placed in their hands and use it and multiply it and take care of it and nurture it. Because to do so is to show honor, deference, and respect for the one who has given you this responsibility. And that would ultimately be the Heavenly Father. But beneath that would be Yahusha, who has given his servants responsibilities to see how they handle themselves. Okay? So many of you have read the parable before, so we're not going to read the whole thing. But we know that the one who had five multiplied it into ten, and the one who had two multiplied it to four. But the one who only had one, he was afraid, so he hid his one in the earth, and it produced nothing. He only had the one. He didn't have any increase, none. And you know the father's all about the increase. He is the master husbandman. He is the master farmer. And farmers are about that increase. And his son Yahusha is about that increase. So if he gives something into our hands, he expects it to produce and bear fruit. That is the expectation. So the wicked servant was afraid and he buried his talent in the ground and didn't do much with it and it didn't bear any fruit. And so when the master came back, he was very angry at the wicked servant. But the others, he said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of thy Adon. So we see that in this parable, those who were faithful with what they've been given, will be given more, okay? That's the lesson here. Those who were faithful in the small will be given and elevated to receive the many or the much, okay? So what does that have to do with us today? Well, today, the Father is testing us to see how faithful we are over the small. Perhaps some of you have small roles. Perhaps you're a mother, the Father's looking to see how you handle that responsibility of the small. How well do you mother? How well do you take care of your family? How well do you serve? Perhaps your father. How well do you minister to your family? How well do you serve as priest and king of your home? Perhaps you're just an employee. How well do you serve your employer? Do you do it with diligence? Are you on time? So the Father's watching to see how we handle these little responsibilities that he gives us and then if we handle them well, he'll give us more, okay, in the kingdom. And sometimes here on earth. We're going to continue on. 
We'll be reading now in Exodus chapter 18, Shemot, Exodus chapter 18. Hearken now unto my voice. Now this is Jethro or Raul speaking. This is Masha's father-in-law. He is seeing that Masha is busy working, tending to the people, listening to all of their cases before him, and he is taking these to the father and bringing forth a righteous judgment. And his father-in-law is saying, you're exhausted. You can't keep up at this pace. So he says, hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and Yahuwah shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Yahweh, that thou mayest bring the causes unto Yahuwah. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt shew them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear Yahuwah. So right here he's saying, you're busy. So what you need to do is you need to teach the people. You need to instruct them in the way they are to go. You're to teach them and instruct them what the Father's commands are so that they know and so that they don't come behind in any gift. They know everything they're supposed to do. And then you're supposed to choose able-bodied men, those who fear Yahuwah, men of truth, hating covetousness, meaning they won't take a bribe, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. So he is sharing the load. He's got it all on his shoulders, Mashadez, and his father-in-law is saying, you need to share the load. You need to share the burden. So he's choosing men who are able-bodied, who are non-covetous, who will not be able to be bribed, who are honest, who have integrity, and he's giving them leadership positions. And their leadership is based on their level of maturity and their level of responsibility, their level of willingness to serve, and a whole host of things. So he's choosing them. And some who are more responsible, who are more able, he's giving them rulership over thousands. And others, hundreds. And then fifties. And then tens. And so there are some who may only have 20 people who they're ruling over. And some may have 20,000. It's all depending on how responsible they are and how they can handle these things. And so those who are faithful over the little in the kingdom to come will be given rulership over the much. So the Father's looking at us to see how we handle the small things that he places in our hands. It goes on to say, If thou shalt do this thing, and Yahuwah command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. So Masha hearkened unto the voice of his father-in-law, and did all that he had said. And Masha chose able men out of all of Yasharal, and made them heads over the people rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons. The hard cases they brought unto Masha, but every small matter they judged themselves. And Moses, Masha, let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. And that would have been the land of Midian. We see here that he was given, Masha was given wise counsel, and he took it. It's a wise man who's able to take wise counsel. So he took the counsel and he got help. And the help that he got was really beneficial. So not only are people, the people that he chose, able to walk in their gifts and their calling, but he is able to spend more time hearing from the Father so that he can lead the whole congregation of Yasharal and also so that he's not worn out. Okay, It's important that leaders learn how to delegate. A good leader is a delegator. So why do we mention this today? Well, we find ourselves on the cusp of another exodus. And once again, the father's choosing leaders. He's choosing those, he's raising up those within the nation, and he's giving them responsibility and roles. Maybe he's called you to start a Bible study, or he's called you to be an at-home parent, and maybe you weren't doing that before. That's a role and a responsibility. Perhaps he's called you to begin a fellowship or an assembly. Or perhaps he's called you to a prayer group. Whatever it is, it's a responsibility. And it may seem small to you, 
but it's something that the father is saying, this is what I want you to do. And he's watching to see how well you handle that small thing. And if you handle that small thing well, he can reward you or he will reward you with bigger things and greater responsibilities here now and in the kingdom to come. So handle well what the Father places into your hands. Handle it well. Take it seriously. Don't take anything that he gives you to do lightly. Take it all very seriously. And it could net great rewards within the kingdom for you, for those who were faithful to the charge. Well, I just wanted to talk about these things with you today. It's just a brief little reading and a brief little message here, just talking about the leadership in the kingdom. And so I pray those of you who, who are eager to serve, to get into the Father's presence and say, Father, I don't yet have an assignment, but I'd like to have an assignment. I'd like for you to use me for your glory and for your esteem. I'd like for you to be magnified through me. I'd like to do your work. So ask him, ask him, what would he have you to do? And then whatever he tells you to do, do it. Hallelujah. Let's pray, brothers and sisters. Oh, Ab Yahuwah, ruler of the heavens, creator of all that exists, unseen, but seen in your creation, mighty, powerful, splendid, bright, the shining one. Your presence fills the whole world, the whole universe and beyond. It is in you that we live and we move and we have our very being. We are your offspring. We are the sheep of your pasture. Oh, almighty Yahuwah, you are high and lifted up and your train fills the temple. Almighty Yahuwah, you are the one to whom we bow. You are the one to whom we worship. We offer praise and worship unto you, Father, for you are the Most High. You are al Alyun. You are the Most High Yahuwah. Yahuwah, Yahuwah. Beside you there is no other. There is no other Savior. There is no other Redeemer. You alone you alone, by your mighty right hand, who is the son of your right hand, Yahusha HaMashiach, you make yourself seen in the world, and you do mighty acts and you do mighty deeds. And we give you thanks and we give you praise. We honor you on this new yom, on this new day. We thank you for your presence that dwells with and abides upon us and in us and through us. You are the source of our life. You are the source of our strength. You are the source of our being. You are the source of our sustenance. You are everything to us. You are our food and you are our drink. You are our bread and you are the sun upon our foreheads that lightens our way, that lightens our path through your word. You are our shield and our high tower. You are our hiding place. The righteous run into you and we are safe. And we are saved from all calamity, from all that is evil in the world. We are safe from it. We are ensconced in your righteousness. And you have given us of your righteousness through your Son. It's a great gift and we thank you for that honor of being called the children of Yahuwah. Oh, how mighty you are. We thank you on this new day that you've created for us. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. Yahuwah be praised forever. Ab Yahuwah, I come before you on this new yom, thankful with my heart full of gratitude toward you because you are lovely. You are altogether lovely and your presence evokes feeling of such love and such adoration in my heart. It feels like it will break from the love that you have placed for yourself in my heart. I pray, Father, that you would help me to endure until the end. I pray, Father, that you would cleanse my garments, that you would help me to be washed in white, white linen, ready to receive your son when he returns to the earth. 
to judge the living and the dead. I pray, Father, that you would help us all to endure until the end and that we might all be dressed in white linen robes, which represents the righteousness of the saints. Hallelujah. Yahuwah be praised. Father, please guide our steps. Help us to know where to go and what to do and how to be in these last times. Help us to know what it is that you desire to do in us and through us in these last times. Keep our feet from falling and slipping in these last times. Father, manifest your glory and your power in such a way that the world is astounded. Arise, O Yahuwah, and let your enemies be scattered. Arise, O Father. Come down from the heavenly realms, bow the heavens and come down and ride upon the wings of the cherub and fly, fly on the wings of the wind. Fly, Father, and come down and let us see your presence and your power and your might as you judge the world in righteousness in your Son. But Father, we know before that happens, you're going to gather us back into our homeland. You have promised it and you will do it. And it is on the horizon so far removed from what we thought we understood. But it's coming. And may you give us ears to hear and eyes to see so that we might receive your instructions in this hour. So that we can put aside what we think we know, what we think we believe, what we think we understand. So that we can receive your instructions in this hour. That it's nigh at hand. It's no longer on the horizon based on what we think we know. It is here and it is now. It is so close. We're talking not years, not even months and months, but weeks and weeks. Halal Yahuwah. Halal Yahuwah. Father, we thank you that you will keep your promises that you made to Abraham when you told him that his his children would be enslaved in a land that was not their own, and they would serve those wicked nations for 400 years. But at the end of that time, that you would bring them out, bring us out with great substance. You promised, and you keep your promises. You are an alua of the oath, of the seven times oath. Shaba, Shaba, Shaba. You keep your promises, your oath, your Shaba. And your Shabbats are based on your seven times oath and your promises that you stand upon and we stand upon. You are the solid rock upon which we stand. And you promised that you would gather Abraham's children from the four corners of the earth and you will do it. And it is coming. Grant us, Father, that we would have ears to hear and eyes to see in the season so that we might receive your instructions. Grant us that we might not further away the time that we have left here. Grant us, Father, that we might hear in the ear, that we might do, we might obey, that we might follow your statutes and your dictates and your instructions in this hour. Give us ears to hear like never before, dear Father. Grant us that we might hear like we've never heard in the past. Give us extra sensitive ears to your instructions and your guidance, even to your your verbal and nonverbal cues. When you guide us with your eye, let us follow your eye and let us follow those breadcrumbs that you've left for us. Father, you're giving us instructions in this hour. May we heed what you're saying to us. May we understand what you're doing in this hour. And if we don't understand, may we simply obey and do what you're telling us to do. Father, we thank you. Please continually wash your nation. Father, we have sinned against you in great ways. We've sinned against you in our own right. Each of us individually have sinned against you and broken your commandments. Please forgive us. Please forgive us for breaking your commandments, for sinning against you with our mouths and with our bodies, with our minds, our hands and with our feet. Forgive us for breaking your laws and your statutes. Forgive us for the idolatry. Forgive us for loving things more than we love you. Forgive us. 
And Father, we also ask that you would forgive our ancestors, all of them, going all the way back to Adam. Father, forgive him. Forgive him for placing the needs and the desires or wishes of his wife above you. Forgive Eve, Hua. Forgive her, Father, for being curious for thinking that she could attain unto righteousness, wisdom, status, position, separate and apart from you and your commands. Forgive her. Forgive her for being deceived by the wicked one. Forgive her. Forgive her ancestors for sinning against you in the desert, for withstanding Masha. Forgive Korah in his ignorance Forgive him, Father, for his rebellion. Father, forgive Achan, who took things that were marked for destruction and hid it in his tent. He was destroyed in his whole household. Father, forgive him. Let your mercies go beyond the grave, Father. Forgive them for their sins. Forgive them for their trespasses. King Saul, who couldn't seem to get it right, he couldn't seem to get it right. When he was small in his own eyes, he was pleasing to you. But then he began to seek the approval of the people. He began to live for the praise of man, and he lost sight of what was really important. And he went, ended up being judged of you. Father, forgive him. Forgive him of his sins. Every wicked king that's ever been leader over your nation, Forgive them for their idolatry and the ways in which they led the people away from you. Forgive them, Father, and let your grace be sufficient for them. Forgive them. And I repent on behalf of my sins and on behalf of the sins that they have committed and all of the sins that they've committed that have fallen upon the generation prior to this and the one prior to that. Yahushua said that all the sins of our wicked, wicked ancestors who would not obey, would fall upon the generation that he found himself standing in. He said, it's going to fall upon your head and your house is going to be left unto you desolate and you will see me no more until you say, Baruch Kaba Bashem, Yahuwah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahuwah. Father, forgive us. And forgive us of all the sins that our ancestors have committed because the fathers have eaten grapes and it has set the teeth of the children on edge. We have inherited the judgment that comes from the sins of our ancestors because they would not obey and it fell upon us and it fell upon our ancestors before us. Father, forgive us, cleanse us and make us clean. Apply the blood of the lamb all the way back to Adam throughout all of our generations cleanse us and make us clean before you forgive us forgive us with a full forgiveness and pardon us throw our sins into the sea of forgetfulness and pardon us and may we never sin against you in the manner that we have in the past give us a heart to obey you give us a heart to do your will give us a heart to do your bidding we love you help us to love you more Help us to love you more than our comfort. Help us to love you more than our opinions. Help us to love you more than our desire to debate. Help us to love you more than we want to be right. Help us to love you the way you deserve to be loved. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer. Thank you for answering my petitions. Cleanse your nation. Cleanse your people. Cleanse your people, Father. And let the sins that have fallen upon us and their consequences be erased, Father. Grant us a complete salvation. Grant us a complete salvation. And have mercy upon our ancestors that have gone on before us. Have mercy. Your mercy extends beyond the grave. Have mercy. Have mercy. Halal Yahuwah. Halal Yahuwah. Halal Yahuwah.
I am Yahuwah, Sabaoth. There is none powerful like me. I am Yahuwah, Sabaoth. I know the end from the beginning. I have established days of old, and I know all of the events from past, present, and future. I see all, I stand above all. Who can withstand me? Who can stand in my place and be me? None, no one. Some try, but they fail. And I will bring my judgment upon all those who would withstand me and stand in my place, receiving my honor and my glory and my esteem that is meant for me and none other. I am Yahuwah Sabaoth, and I will be glorified among the nations. They will bow before me, and they will see my effulgent glory, and they will see my splendor, and they will see my power, and they will see my mighty right hand, and they will see my judgment fall upon their heads, and they will cry and weep and wail for shame and terror when they recognize my great terribleness my splendor, my power, my might. I am Yahuwah Sabaoth, and I do as I say that I will do. I am that I am. The gathering of the nation of Yasharal is at hand. I am restoring my nation once again in one day. You have been scattered you have been flung to the four corners of the earth. You have not been a nation before me nor before the world. You have been hidden. You have been forgotten. You have been made a byword in the earth. You have been abused and you have been punished. But those I assigned to punish you took full advantage of the power that they had been given over you. They will reap as they have sown. The time of your gathering is nigh at hand. And I have established leaders within your nation, such as Masha assigned leaders at the time of the Exodus. At this Exodus, I have assigned leaders throughout the nation of Yasharal. It is your responsibility to obey as you are told, or you will be left behind. As I bring instructions through my servants, your responsibility is to listen and to heed so that you will know where you are to be, where you are to go, how you are to behave, and how you are not to behave. These instructions, as they come forth, must be heeded. I will tolerate no rebellion among the ranks. This servant is one of those leaders. She is to be heeded. She speaks my words. All who oppose her, oppose me. I will defend her, for I am her defense. There are others who are called to leadership in this time. They are male, they are females. My grace, my power, my anointing is not hindered by gender. I am Yahuwah Sabaoth, and I use whom I will to bring forth my purposes in the earth. Instructions are forthcoming. I am pouring out my wisdom, my understanding, my instructions, and my guidance to my messengers, to the leaders that I have chosen. Listen, heed, obey, and live. If you do not know who you have been called to, ask me and I will show you. Follow, abide, obey, and be ready to escape the lands to which you have been scattered. It will come suddenly, so be ready. Have your bags packed and be as your ancestors were on the night that the firstborn in Egypt died. They ate, hurried, 
with their staffs in their hands and their sandals upon their feet. They ate, eating the Passover, ready to escape, ready to go out of Egypt. So must you live ready with your staff in your hands, with your shoes on your feet, ready to escape Egypt and Babylon. Live ready. Heed my warnings, heed my instructions. Listen to those whom I have sent unto you. Do not be rebellious or you will be rejected. The leaders that I am raising up in this hour, they are as arcs of safety. As you run into them, as you run into their power and authority that I have given to them, as you run in and sit at their feet and hear my words through them, you are entering an ark of safety and the door will be closed and I will keep you. Those of you who are submissive, those of you who are obedient. But if you insist on being rogue, if you insist on doing things your own way, going your own way, standing outside of the nation of Yasharal, doing your own thing, you will be excluded. Be warned. Be warned. You will be excluded. I am calling my people to align themselves. I am calling my people to an orderly arrangement in the same way that your ancestors arranged themselves by truth as they traveled in the wilderness. In the same way, I am calling you to orderly arrangements to organize yourselves in an orderly fashion as you move out of Babylon and Egypt. When you see the attack that comes, know that the darkness follows. And as the darkness lifts, it is time to flee Babylon before its final destruction comes. You will be given instructions along the way through my servants, and they will be instructed by the Malachim. Your job is to heed and to obey and to not be wicked and find yourself outside the camp. As you wait for your salvation to manifest in time, seek my face, seek my will for you, ask of me what I would have you to do in this hour, seek me for your needs to be met. This is the season of favor for my children. Ask, what do you have need of? Ask, place a demand upon my grace. Ask, what is it that you need in this hour? Simply ask, but do not ask amiss so that you may consume it upon your lust. Do not ask because you are fearful. Ask in faith, not wavering, not looking to the left or to the right, but having your eyes firmly fixed upon me. I am Yahuwah Sabaut. There is none above me. And these are the words that I have spoken through my servant. May you heed and may you obey what you have heard. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Halal Yahuwah, Halal Yahuwah. Thank you, Father. Halal Yahuwah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for speaking. Thank you for speaking. Thank you for condescending to speak to us. We love you, dear Father. We love you, dear Father. Please open the eyes of our understanding so that we might know what is the hope of your calling in this season. We give you honor and esteem and praise. Hallelujah. Let your word be baruched forever. Let your name be esteemed forever. Halal Yahuwah. Aman and Aman. Oh, 
Well, thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining me once again on the channel and for another session of our Sunrise Prayers. We thank you, Father, for speaking to us, and we thank you for your promises, which are yes and aman. And we thank you that you have established leaders within the nation to speak to, to help guide us through this process as we prepare to leave Babylon and Egypt, as you have said. We thank you, Father, for all that you are doing in this hour. And I thank you for my brothers and sisters who have joined to hear your word on this day. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, brothers and sisters, I pray that you'll take heed to what you heard today uh, from our Father and understand that He's telling us that we're ha we have to organize ourselves according to the way we organized in the past. It can't be just us separate as individuals. We have to recognize that we are part of a nation. We are part of His nation. We have to organize ourselves by our groups. And He led me to believe and understand that our tribal designations will be restored unto us once we get back into the land. So we have to organize ourselves under particular leaders that he's raising up and you organize yourself under them and they will be receiving instructions and they will be passing them on to you. And so you have to be in place so that you'll know where to go and what to do and all that when the gathering is beginning. It's going to be very important that we maintain order during this because this is going to be an amazing feat because there's a lot of us all over the world. And so we have to be organized and we have to do it in an orderly fashion. And the Father insists on order. And all those who would rebel, he said, they won't be involved. So may we heed the word of the Most High for us today. And may we prepare ourselves and prepare our hearts for what we know is coming in terms of conflict, then darkness, then gathering. Halal Yahuwah. Halal Yahuwah. May the Most High Yahuwah Baruch and keep you, brothers and sisters. Bless and keep you. And may he make his beautiful face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom, shalom, peace in every area of your life. And as we await our gathering out of Babylon and out of Egypt, may we not be idle May we spend our time wisely seeking the Father's face and praying ahead of the darkness, praying now so that our faith fail not, so that we might withstand what lurks in the darkness. Let us pray Psalm 91 over ourselves and our families now. Let us seek the Father's face regarding these things now. Halal Yahuwah. Thank you for being with me today. Shalom and shalom.